Well, right now, search and rescue teams are looking for survivors in this building collapse that we've been talking about tonight. At least one person confirmed dead and nearly 100 others still unaccounted for tonight. Rescue efforts include teams with canines that specialize in sniffing out people who may all these hours later be trapped in that rubble. The local mayor says the dogs, though, have struggled so far. We had dogs out in the middle of the night uh, looking for survivors in the uh, in the rubble, but it was just so dangerous and so dark that uh, they made one pass and they did not get any hits. The dogs did return to search the building, of course, as the day went on. There are now around the clock search and rescue efforts happening at that site. Tonight, I'm joined by Sinead Embaro. She's a military and police canine trainer with more than 15 years of experience. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Talk a little bit about how those canine teams are being used tonight and what um, constitutes success for them and that team after this kind of tragedy? Well, how we use those dogs is obviously to seek and find live victims. Um, and how we do that is when we deploy the dogs onto the pile, we just let them go and search for, basically they're searching for breath more than anything. Um, they'll search for human odor as well, but it's really that live breath that they're looking for, for confirmation that there's somebody hidden in that pile. Once they get, or once they locate that breath or human odor, they will begin to bark for the alert, and then we'll go over and start to investigate. We'll call the engineers in, we'll call uh, the rest of our team in. They'll um, administer the cameras down, take a look, and then make the decision from then on uh, whether to uh, start opening that hole or that section up to find victims in there or um, basically try to figure out how to move forward from then to locate what the dog is alerting to. And how long does it take to train a canine to do this kind of work, particularly what I imagine is just an unimaginably difficult scene like the one we're seeing there in Surfside? So it takes roughly, I would say, two years, a good two, maybe two and a half years to get a really good dog uh, in order to deploy. Um, it takes a lot of team effort, not only from the dog, but also from the handler, uh, because it has to be a good relationship with the handler and dog in order to go in and uh, seek out the victims. So. Yeah, two, and a, two to two and a half years, minimum. And how are the dogs kept safe? It strikes me as still a dangerous and unstable scene, to say the least. Uh, how do you keep the dogs themselves safe, especially working in those kind of conditions in a mountain of rubble like that? It's tough. So we have the engineers go in first. They confirm what areas are safe for us to search. If it's uh, tagged where we're not allowed to go and the dog ends up going there, we call the dog back. Uh, and that's where, like I said, that's where the teamwork comes in. We have the control on the dog for obedience. The dog comes back to us and then we send the dog uh, in a different direction. Um, we try our best to keep them safe as we try to keep ourselves safe. Um, and that's just part of the job. Um, Unfortunately, there are some dogs that will uh, either fall into the pile or might get punctured. So we have to administer first aid and, and get them to a clinic to get their vet checks, et cetera, as we would if we got injured. So we treat them just as we would treat ourselves if we got injured. Well, you certainly know better than most what those teams are going through tonight, both canine and human, and, and what they're going to be facing uh, in the days ahead. Thanks for giving us a little bit of your time tonight and, and some insight. We appreciate it. Thank you.